Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. Today I want to show you probably the best antenna I've ever owned. And uh, I know it's a big statement, but uh, it's the truth. It is the uh, half-wave and fed antenna, and in particular this one that I use all the time. It's the uh, PAR 102040 uh, and fed half-wave. It's made of a tuning box here at the bottom, which contains a, uh, an impedance transformer and a capacitor, SO239 socket, about 41 feet of wire, and towards the uh, top of the antenna you have a trap here, which is also a uh, which is a coil and a capacitor, which will let some frequencies above a certain value uh, through the trap. To use the reminder of the wire and uh, block frequencies under another value which will use only the bottom side of the uh, of the wire the trap also makes the antenna a little bit shorter than normal for instance this is a uh, 10 20 40 meter antenna so uh, the lowest band is 40 meters which normally would be 65 to 68 feet long but it's only 41 because of the trap, which is great because sometimes it's hard to find a tree that's tall enough or have a mast tall enough to have a full-size half-wave antenna. And that's their disadvantage. The half-wave antenna is pretty long because it's a full-size antenna. It's very efficient though, and that's the advantage. Um, I once made a contact with this very antenna from Florida to Estonia about 5,300 miles using 1.3 watts. That's using Morse code, of course, another very efficient, uh, very efficient mode, but still, I mean, you know, it's pretty darn good. I've made multiple contacts and regular contacts from Florida to Russia using uh, anywhere from one to 10 watts. I used to make uh, regular contacts with my friend uh, Ray, Radio Ray, uh, who was at the time about 800 miles away. Uh, I was in Florida, I was in Virginia. And we made uh, regular, uh, you know, chats, uh, sometimes lowering power to down to 100 milliwatts. <laughs> that was no problem. So a half wave and fed is very efficient because it's full size, it's what you want. And when you use, uh, say, a quarter wave antenna, uh, vertical, well, you know, you have your quarter wave, you need to have a wire on the ground, that's also a quarter wave, or, some, or you ground your antenna, you ground the outer shield of the coax to the ground, and uh, uh, since the earth has only a 300 ohm resistance, you use the ground as your other quarter wave to make a half wave. But when you use a full half wave antenna, you don't have to worry about grounding or having a counterpoise wire or anything because everything is here. You hang it up or horizontally and uh, you're all set. I also have a uh, half wave and fed for the uh, 80 meter band, which is 132 foot long and that's you're not going to hang that from a tree, except if you, know, if you live in California, maybe. Uh, but uh, here, no way. So I hang it horizontally, and that's the goal, because since the signal is going perpendicular to the antenna, so if you have your antenna horizontal, the signal is going to go straight up. It's going to bounce, well, refract on the ionosphere and rain back down, covering a regional area. That's NVIS, Near Vertical Incidence Skywave, and sometimes that's what you want. You want to cover a regional area, 
when you want to go very far, you need a vertical antenna so that the signal is radiated at a low angle and we refract on the ionosphere also at a low angle and will skip very far. So uh, that's why I like uh, unfed the half waves because it's a full size antenna. It's extremely efficient. You only need to hang it from one point, you know, on the top and you let it hang. A dipole you need to attach at two different points and uh, you know sometimes three if it's long because uh, you know you don't want your antenna to droop like this but a uh, unfed halfway if you hang it from a branch on top of a tree or on your mast and it hangs straight down or slightly sloping and i hope it's not too confusing but uh, basically just remember that the halfwave unfed antenna is very good why don't I show you some uh, operating with this antenna? The uh, PAR antenna, which by the way now is sold by LNR Precision, but I think PAR still has one, is a little bit at an angle. And I'm set up right here. The uh, KX2 is plugged in directly to the, into the antenna. No need for a tuner. Roger, thank you very much. You are 57 here, 57 to 58 in the uh, north of France, uh, QSL. Roger, Roger, 57 is a beautiful report. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. You're 59. You're 59. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Fox Rock 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Okay, have a nice day. Good luck and many years to you. Macedonia, <laughs> not bad. You didn't think I was just going to uh, give you a bit of old footage and that's it, right? Nah, check this out. The uh, PAR is uh, hanging off this uh, spider beam 12 meter pole and we're going to try to make some interesting contacts. Now, if I can make a contact with a pixie that outputs 300 milliwatts on 40 meters with the PAR and fed. Uh, <laughs> that means it works. So let's give it a shot. The Pixie doesn't have a side tone, but uh, I'm going to use my uh, KX2, uh, the receiver of the KX2, just to hear myself. But it's not going to be part of the uh, experiment. If you look at the uh, reverse beacon network, uh, you notice that I've been heard uh, all over Europe. So that's excellent using 300 milliwatts. If you look at the bottom though, you can see that there is one spot for a frequency on the 20 meter band. And if you notice again what the frequency is, it's twice the 40 meter frequency. And that's a harmonic. And it's really bad because my pixie is not filtering harmonics, uh, multiples of the uh, 40 meter frequency. So I can be probably heard on all the multiple frequencies uh, above uh, 40 meter. So I'm not going to use the Pixie anymore unless I really have to, because, uh, well, that's just not good practice. Or I would have to add a filter 
uh, to block frequencies above the 40 meter band. Thank you. This is PA9JO calling CQ and listening QRZ. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. How is the Bravo Yankee? Good afternoon. This is Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Over. Okay, very good. Fox 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Good afternoon, uh, Gil. I do copy you with a 5 8 here in Holland. Over. Oh, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I didn't see your uh, signal here, but uh, anyway, I'm just using a uh, KX2 here with uh, a, a PAR unfed and just a few watts. I think I'm outputting about seven right now. Over. Okay, you're telling me that you're using two watts at the moment. Is that correct? Uh, no, seven, seven watts, uh, seven watts, and you are five eight here, five eight near the town of Lille, uh, Lima, India, Lima, Lima, Echo, QSL. Yeah, okay, really good, uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, even with uh, the strong uh, QSB here, your signal is holding fine. So compliments for uh, for the for the station with seven watts. It's doing absolutely great, over. Very good. Uh, yeah, I'm testing an antenna for YouTube and. Uh, I thought uh, going QRP would be the way to go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that is uh, the most important thing. If you want to check an antenna, don't use that much power. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Well, Gil, thank you so much. And uh, your antenna is doing, uh, like I said, a great job for you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you for calling from France. And uh, I hope to meet you soon again. Fox 4, Whiskey Bravo Yankee, Papa Alpha 9, Juliet Oscar, over. Have a great day, uh, Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Don't know what that is, that's pretty weird. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Something for? Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Uh, Roger, that's it. Uh, Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. QSL? A lot of QRM here. A lot of QMexico. Some people calling here, but uh, very bad QRM. They are seeking for another frequency, maybe two kilocycles down. Calling CQ again there. CQ DX, CQ Dog X ray. Oscar Echo 2, Charlie, Radio Papa. This is Ontario Echo number two, Charlie, Radio Papa. Ontario Echo number two, Charlie, Radio Papa, calling CQDX. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, yeah, you are 5'9 here uh, also, and it's a real 5'9. <laughs> a very good signal uh, here in uh, the north of France near the town of Lille, uh, Lima, India, Lima, Lima, Echo, QSL. Oui, Fox 4, uh, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Fox 4, uh, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Foxtrot 4, uh, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. QSL? Uh, bravo, Yankee. Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. F4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Correct, uh, correct. Uh, over.
And there you have it. The unfed half wave is a very good, very efficient and practical antenna. LNR Precision uh, makes the uh, PAR 102040 now. I don't think it's called the PAR anymore, of course, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's uh, a very good uh, model and uh, takes up to uh, 25 watts, which I forgot to mention, but hey, that's plenty. I used it with my uh, RT320, uh, which outputs 30 watts and had no problem at all. They make models, of course, that uh, will take uh, 200, so I don't know how many watts, but, uh, you know, uh, very high power. Others make them too, uh, take uh, EA3 GCY. Uh, in Spain, makes uh, unfed half-wave tuners like the MEF1 or the Iller Tena. QRPGuys.com, uh, QRPKits.com. I'm sure I'm forgetting someone, <laughs> my apologies, but just go to the internet and do a search for a half-wave and fed tuner and you'll find them. Have a good one.